Hey Zoomers, welcome back to World Zoom. Happy you could join me. Hit that subscribe button uh, if you will. I uh, would certainly appreciate it. Hey, today's topic is going to be, I, I think, somewhat interesting or a cautionary tale, perhaps more than anything. And that's basically like if you can't pay here in the hospital in the Philippines, you're out. And I just want to tell you a quick story about uh, two Filipinos that I know, a husband and wife. And the husband, for the most part, had been uh, historically healthy, about 53 uh, years old. And uh, he presented himself to the public hospital, which is the least uh, expensive of the hospitals. Um, he had some, a little bit of chest pain, more like shoulder pain and jaw pain. So he was clever enough to go in and get it uh, checked. And so this is just a regular, you know, Filipino family. And so he goes in uh, to the public hospital, he gets checked. Uh, they do the test, they find out that he has some blockage. Uh, they put him in overnight. Uh, for the hospital. Now the next day they're trying to decide, uh, you know, what to do. So he stays the first day, he stays the second day. Uh, they run some tests. They determine that he's got some blockage and he needs a procedure. Uh, but the family really doesn't have any money to speak of. So now they've already got two days in to the hospital. For you and I, we probably wouldn't bat an eye too much at that. I mean, you're at this point, he's not even over $200, uh, but $200 is a substantial amount here. And if they're going to send him somewhere to do a cardiac catheter uh, or to be able to run that all the way up, uh, you know, into your heart, especially if they need to put a stent in was what they originally uh, determined for the diagnosis and the treatment. And so the, he elected to go home and discuss with his family, you know, was it possible or what they could do. He had another episode a couple days later, so he went back in the same hospital. He stayed uh, two days uh, additional during that time. He then met with the counselors or with the billers that are there in the hospital to be able to negotiate some sort of fee uh, to be able to cover the costs of the stents being placed in and what other things could he do? Was there some sort of traditional medicine? Was there something that he could do outside of the procedure? Please remember here, there is no Medicare, right? For, for 65 and over. There's no Medicaid uh, if you're disabled or uh, you know poor and you have just like in the U.S. you're going to be covered you know regardless. Also, you know there is no charity services. So unless you happen to be luckily and have some wealthy friends or you can pool your resources or maybe your church have a pitch in to help you out, you're really in big trouble. So he has a two-day stay home, followed by two days at home, additional two days in the hospital. He returns home. They're not successful uh, in negotiating the fees for the stint, uh, which is going to be right around 40, I think he said, she said 42,000 pesos. So somewhere in the $800 range, right around 800 US dollars. So they determine that's not something they can do. They think maybe he can exercise maybe and cut down on the sodium and see what can do. They know they need the stents, two of them, uh, but they elect uh, not to go it and, and then four days later he passes away. Uh, that's just a shame. I mean, really, you're talking about $800 and be able to get in there and have the stent, have some, you know, some of the procedures that are there. And I just want to say, even though in this case it's a Filipino, it doesn't have to be. 
it, it could be you, right? If you haven't set that up and you have the funds in place to protect yourself here. You, all of you, I just had breakfast with uh, Sebastian a couple days ago up in Valencia, if you remember him on Mark, Every Man Has a Story. He's the guy that fell down in the bar and, and broke his elbow. And he, he went to first a, um, a healer, a traditional healer, and they took bark and such and wrapped it around his, his arm. Then they took like a ace bandage and wiped it around. And this whole thing went on for weeks and weeks where he had uh, initial surgery because he couldn't afford it. Uh, went really to the, it didn't take, it didn't work. They couldn't get it back in joint, couldn't pop it back in, couldn't release it, I guess, in other uh, terms. He then came back after Mark raised some money for him and gave him some money, he got somewhere around 1,000, 1,500 US dollars, had a second surgery that also did not work. Third time around, it did work. When I saw him yesterday, he didn't have the brace on, even though he admitted he probably shouldn't have, but he didn't have it on. So the end result for him uh, was pretty positive, although he had, you know, a tough setup. He's in, you know, this public hospital. There's like 10, 15 people in his room. He's not in a private red, so there's just bed, bed, bed. All the family sleeps in there as well. So you have, you know, for every patient, you sometimes have a couple family members that are in there, you know, through all day. And I don't know if they stayed all night, but I got the impression that they, that they did. In one instance, he didn't have enough money to pay for his hospital stay, so they discharged him. He went down and slept, slept on a bench, uh, you know, outside of the hospital. And that's what I want to make sure you hear loud and clear from me today. If you're in the hospital receiving treatment and you can't make the payment, you're out. You're out. They will discharge. Life or death, emergent, not emergent. If you can't make that payment, you're out. So figure out how you're going to have some sort of rescue plan, you know, to be able to take care of those things during the time that you're here because there are no backup sources except, you know, unless you have your friends like Sebastian did. This Filipino gentleman didn't have anyone that had $800 and lost his life, you know, over $800, which I understand is a substantial uh, sum of money. So have your, pan to, your plan to pay if you can. Uh, also remember on the scams that you see when you're back in the US or Canada and uh, the person you're chatting with shows you like a hospital bill or says they have to, you know, they've been discharged and they have <clears throat> to pay this bill. It doesn't work that way. They attach your body and, and that sounds exactly like it means. They literally attach your body to service the debt and you won't be discharged you know, from the hospital or to be dismissed until you have uh, everything paid for. And if for some reason you do manage, they'll immediately go to the immigration and put a hold on your passport. You remember when you go to the immigration here and they give you that slip of paper that says this individual does not uh, appear on the foreigner list or does not appear as a bad character individual. Well, if you skip out on a hospital, you will appear on that list and you will not be leaving until you settle that date. So first, you don't get to leave the hospital. If you manage to get past that, uh, you're not able to leave the country. So please don't underestimate the potential uh, for this kind of problem, maybe even the single biggest potential problem that you could have here in the Philippines, right? I mean, going broke is one thing. Having a medical emergency and not having the funds to be able to take it or any way to get it or have it sent to you from Australia or England uh, to be able to, to help you or your bank account or whatever it is that you have, I really want to encourage you, if you think about it, to get one of those simple Phil Health plans if you can. 
I realize it only covers, you know, 20, 25% of the total bill, but it does do a couple things. It gets you in the door and it gets you provided the service if you have Phil Health. And they don't cost much. I mean, you know, 50, 60, 70 at most uh, US dollars per month. Some are more in the 25, 30 uh, dollar range. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not correcting, I'm not quoting the exact amount uh, because I just can't remember what they are. But what I am saying is a very small amount on the scheme of things to make sure if something happens uh, that you're able to get, uh, get some coverage. So think about those things. You've planned on many other things for your trip, uh, but have an idea of how if something emergent comes, even if it's a couple thousand US, and I know that's a lot of money, but that's enough in most cases to get you through unless it's something really uh, catastrophic, but don't be in that situation where 800 US dollars is the difference between your loss of life. Uh, that's not a good uh, situation to be in, especially if you don't have uh, anyone else out there. So again, that's it. I just, uh, that came up and I saw Sebastian and those two things combined together make me think that maybe uh, you need to hear another cautionary tale about health insurance and having a few extra dollars uh, to, to be able to settle those bills. And what will happen if you don't have the money and that is immediate discharge. So there you have it from Bob and I. We'll have a more cheery subject tomorrow and we'll talk soon. You guys take care. Have a great day.